What's up YouTube, this is Bolo, and I am going to give you a tutorial on how to sequence your kick and bass in Logic Pro 9. And a lot of people uh, ask me the question, how do you get your kick and bass to follow each other without a note being off or anything? And it's fairly simple, so let's go ahead and get to it. So I already had some pulled up already, but I'm going to show you how to do it exactly from scratch. Well, I'm going to leave the uh, bass part on here. Um, basically, what we're going to do is we have a we have a bass part that we set hypothetically for a track, and I'm going to play you this bass part that I just played. I actually used a bass out of my ES24 sampler, um, and I'm using a kick out of my ES24 sampler as well. Um, I use a lot of stuff. You can use it with any sampler, or you use it with contact, whatever you want to do with it. So I got a bass, and let's go ahead and play the bass right now. Alright. Now depending on what type of speakers you got, you might have heard the bass, you might not. I would say go ahead and get some headphones so you can hear it if you don't hear it. But the bass part is in there. So to go ahead and get this with a kick and they're both hitting at the same time is fairly easy. All I did was pick out a kick for my ES24 sampler. I actually got that on another track right here. I made a new track and put the kick on there. And I got my bass right here. What I'm basically going to do is I'm basically going to duplicate this track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Option, left click, and I'm going to drag this up. Just like that. Now as you can see, all the, the MIDI bass notes are inside of my kick. And as you can see, once we play it, you're going to hear the kick playing as well. So. Cool. But we have a problem. One thing about kick drums is usually kick drums don't go up and down an octave. They usually stay in one, uh, just basically in one key or basically one note. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all these notes and route them to one note and it's fairly easy like in logic i love this option the way all you gotta do is click on the side it highlights all the notes all you're gonna do is you're gonna hit option and drag all the notes up so it's op option and your arrow key up or down so you hold option you move your arrow key up and down like that so on these what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna click on the note highlight everything so it's gonna highlight everything I'm going to hold option and I'm going to use my arrow key to go up and down with it. Or you can use it old fashioned way and just highlight it through your mouse and slide it up and down. Either way it works, hey, it works. So now we got our kick and the bass together and now we have our kick all on one note. So when we play it back, this is what we get. that simple you can use this for a lot of applications for trap music uh, dirty south music basically for any type of music you want you can use this uh, with sign bases you can use it with regular bases bases and kicks and basically that's how it works so that's how you get your kick and a bass to be sequenced together now it's pretty much you want to you got everything sequenced together you want to have a pretty good mix between your kick and your bass what I do is I keep it real simple. The number one thing to do have a to have a really good kick in the bass is to really have really good samples. And what I do with my samples, you know, personally, I run mine through my MP, get them sounding pretty hot and pretty thick, and then I run them uh, back into Logic. But if you don't have that, um, what I would say is try to find really good samples online and learn how to use compression and EQ. You don't have to use it in all cases, but in some cases, it's much needed. In this case, I pretty much got my bass uh, kind of what I wanted, but it's just a little bit, you know, out there. So what I did was I put a compressor on it. Let's go to the mixer menu. Uh, I put a compressor on it. And let me turn that on. And I'm actually just going to solo the bass. So this is how it's going to sound. This is... Uh, on it I basically have just really light compression on it uh, you know what I'm 
I'm saying? Her attack is not that fast. Her release is, is fairly fast. Um, my threshold is not really squashing that much. My ratio is really low. So that it just basically is getting like the little peaks basically when it hits a certain octave range. It's just pulling it down. Um, and basically I didn't have to EQ it because I, I kind of like where it's at. Um, I want it kind of thick. Uh, uh, and I want it really just, just hitting real hard. Okay, so now for my kick. My kick, it was, you know... It was kind of good. I like how it is, but in some applications and some songs, I want to make it to where it just fits in with that bass. So let me solo the kick, and this is how it sounds here. That's how it sounds by itself. And actually, uh, let me turn on the EQ. It just has a little bit of low end that I don't want in there, but I still want to keep it fairly thick. And this, this is basically your preference, how you want it to be, but this is how I do it. So I got an EQ on here. I'm actually going to turn that on. And I'm just taking any noises that I don't really want out. So I can take it as far as up. Or I can take it to about to about right there. I want to keep a little bit of that, that low end in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to compress that signal. Now it doesn't matter how you do it. It doesn't matter if you compress it first, EQ it second. Or EQ it first, compress it second. It's all about how it sounds. So I'm going to go ahead and compress it. And it just gives me a really tight sound, just like that. Um, and basically, like I did before, it's, uh, the attack is fairly high, and release is low, and my ratio is almost about the same. Everything is just about the same as as the bass drum. You just, you know, you just want to get it to where it just kind of just takes a little bit off that that top end off just a little bit. Um, actually. You know, if you're using uh, like a MIDI controller, either way, you want to go ahead and, you know, when you use using MIDI controller, you want to set the velocity to a certain velocity where the kick and bass are not going up and down the velocity. So you want to have that velocity set. So I got both of them set in the way. So just basically a little bit of compression does the trick because the velocities are already set and they're not going no higher not, or, or no lower. Okay. So we got that done. Let's go ahead and bring in the bass. And you hear it's really snapping right now. It's like when you get that kick and bass just right, you can actually hear the kick and the bass together, and it has a really good blend to it. Now, I don't have any other instruments on it. But that's how I usually do it. And I usually kind of go about what other sounds I have so I can have that kick and bass stand out and make sure that you have that kick with just a little bit of pop in it so you can hear it with that bass so you can get a good punchy kick and bass. So basically that's it. Sequence the kick and bass and mixing the kick and bass. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and make sure you look out for more videos. And also make sure you go to www. Bolo the producer, that is Bolo, B-O-L-O-D-A producer, all one word, and check out some tracks.